God, <coughs> brothers and sisters, it's been a while since I, it's been just a week actually since I posted a video. Um, today is Sunday, September the 19th. Oh my God, time really flies already. Um, <coughs> today's video is going to be really short and it's targeted to, to very specific demography of people and this message specifically is for barren women. So I'm not talking about single women who are unmarried and don't have kids yet, but I'm speaking directly to women who are married and have been trying to have children and for some reason it's taking a while. Um, I was reading my Bible earlier this week and while I was reading the Bible, a voice said to me this week, you're going to have a message for the barren. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I know nothing about being barren. I, I don't have that experience. What can I possibly say? But I thank God that God reminded me that this is not about me and it's not about what I know, but it's really about the power of the Holy Spirit. And if that's the message that he wants to deliver, then that's the message that he's going to deliver. And so I pray you know, this day, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for this beautiful day. I want to thank you so much for whoever is watching this, this video. And I thank you, Lord, that you have put it in my heart that we should have a message today to speak directly to the barren women. I don't know why you asked me to do this, but I follow you as I always will. And I hearken into your voice and I will walk in obedience. And I ask that as I begin to speak, Holy Spirit, that you'll come down and that you will minister to the people who are watching this and that you will get this video in the hands of those that really need it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So <coughs> this morning, it's, I realized actually, being a woman myself, that in this world today, and probably it's always been that way, that women are somehow defined by their body parts. You know, when I think about women who have suffered from breast cancer and they had to have uh, a mastectomy, a lot of them usually report feeling less of a woman because they no longer have their breasts. And so I can imagine that women who don't have children, who are barren, feel somehow that they're not really fully a woman because they cannot have children, but that's not true. God doesn't see you and determine your worth or your righteousness based on whether you can have children or not. Um, so I really want to encourage you to, and I know it can be a little bit difficult because, you know, of the culture that we live in and the way and the times that we're living in, you know, and you look around and, you know, other families have children and all you ever wanted to do is have children and somehow you feel like you're a failure. But I want to remind you that with God, all things are possible. It may not seem, whatever seems impossible to man is possible with God. Sarah had a child at 99 years old. So Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel were barren for a time, and I talked about this in my other video, Love and Men of the Bible. They were barren for a time, but eventually they had, God blessed them and gave them children. And these weren't just ordinary children. These were anointed men of God that God actually used. So was Hannah, actually. I'm reading the book of Samuel right now. And it's the same thing. Hannah could not have children, but when she had her firstborn child, she dedicated that child, Samuel, to the Lord. And Samuel was one of the great prophets in the Old Testament. And so things might not be happening as fast as you need them to, but you know, a divine delay really might be full testimony at some point you know God might this time of waiting might be something that you could use to continue to seek him and to continue to trust him and to continue to build your faith in him but when it finally happens then it's going to be a testimony unto the Lord because God is a God of the impossible there is no other God in any other faith that has ever delivered his people the way Yahweh has delivered his people Yahweh delivered the Israelites from Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea. This period of being barren might be a Red Sea, but I'm telling you that God has the power and the capacity to open up your womb and give you children. Shall let it be according to your faith. 
you know. God, in the Old Testament, went before the Israelites and delivered the city of Jericho unto them. God fought battles for his people. There is no other deity. I don't care what affiliation you have. Buddha never did anything for his people like that. Neither has Muhammad or the God that Muhammad claims that he worships. Only Yahweh has the power and the capacity to deliver his people and to give his people the things that seem to be impossible. So I need you to remember that what might seem difficult in man's eyes is really very possible with God. And so in the Old Testament, these men of God, Isaac and Jacob, they entreated unto the Lord for their wives. It means that they actually prayed and asked God to give their wives children. And the Lord had them. So, husbands, if you're watching this as the head of the home, yes, I know you might actually have a system of prayer where you pray with your wife and ask for children, but I think it's time to also step it up a little, step it up a notch and find your own private prayer time in the pr prayer closet, just you and God, and begin to intercede for your, for your wife, on behalf of your wife, to have children. Now, <clears throat> For some people, it might be the will of God that you don't have children. And so, I mean, the will of God is the will of God. But for other people, it might be the will of God that you have children. And there's something that's, that's, that's blocking this. And I don't know what it is. You may know what it is. You may not know what it is. But we don't even really need to know the reason why. Because God knows the reason why. And when we call upon him, he will answer us. And so, women, I don't want you to feel that you're less of a woman because at this point in time you cannot have children because that's not how God views you. You need to view yourself the way the Lord views you and completely trust in him and continue to pray to him and ask him because these women were relentless. Hannah prayed. She cried every time her husband and them went up, to them, up out of town to go and worship the Lord. She cried out to the Lord and asked for children and eventually she made a vow and said you know lord if you give me this child i will give him back to you and he will serve you all the days of his life and the lord listened to her prayer and he answered her and she actually kept her promise as soon as samuel could be weaned, then she took him up to the prophet eli and he began to serve eli and she went once a year to see him and even after that because samuel was so faithful to God, the Lord ended up blessing Hannah with three sons and two daughters after that. Similarly, Rachel initially couldn't have kids, but she bore Joseph and Benjamin. Rebecca couldn't have kids, and she bore Jacob and Esau. So the Lord, whenever, you know, whenever we pray to him, he hearkens unto us. And so I want to pray with you today. This is really short. I'm not trying to teach anything. I don't know anything. Um, but all I know is the power of God to save. I can give you a personal testimony. To, I would not be sitting here today because I almost died in my mother's womb. I was due September 16th or something, sometime in the middle of September. By middle of October, I still hadn't come out. And so that Sunday, my mother went to church and she prayed and the man of God laid hands upon her. And that same day, she got liver pains. And even as I was being born, a month later, we both almost died in the process. But yet here I am and here she is. And so God has a purpose and a plan for his people. There was a reason that I was born October 16th instead of September 16th. I don't know what it is. But it was the prayer of a man of God upon my mother that jump-started the, the liver pains. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. My cousin couldn't have kids for the longest time when she was married, probably almost 10 years. And then a pastor prayed for her, and when he prayed for her, she gave back to two beautiful children. So miracles happen today still. Another cousin of mine, another relative that I know of, recently just gave birth to two kids within three years. So, the, so she recently gave birth this year in the month of May, 
to a boy at the age of 47 years old and he's a healthy bouncing baby boy so whoever's watching this video if you're thinking oh i'm in my 30s i'm already 41 or 42 and now my clock is ticking i can't have any more children that's just hogwash because god does not deal in regular man numbers heck even Halle berry gave birth to a child at the age of 47 years old so god has the power to do anything and everything we only just need to trust in him so i'm gonna leave you with two bible verses that we can look at and i'm gonna pray with you and we'll call it a day in luke chapter 4 verse 16 if you can turn with me there hold on a second let me wear my glasses So Luke chapter 4 verse 17, I'm reading from the King James Version. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is Isaiah really. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them, them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So this was Isaiah chapter 61, actually. And that was, he read from verses one to verse Two, and I want to draw your attention to verse three. Okay, actually, I'll set at verse two where he left off to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And in verse seven, he says, For your shame shall ye have double. Which really means that, you know, because when you're barren, I can imagine you feel less of a woman. You feel shame. You feel like you're letting your husband down. You feel like you're letting your entire clan or, your, your, you know, the extended family down. And you feel ashamed. But the Lord is saying that for your shame, you shall have double. You will have a double portion of the anointing and a double portion of the blessing. I need you to hold on to that and even when you go into prayer, always hold on to that and know that the Lord doesn't want you to hang your head down in shame. The Lord doesn't want you to feel less than a human being because you cannot have children right now. The Lord doesn't want you to feel downcast and feel outcast because that is not his plan for you. That is not his will for you because the Lord has ways and his ways are higher than our ways. And the way he does things, always God is a very methodical God. He does things systematically. The way that the universe is structured is such that any little change in the way things are would cause an imbalance and we wouldn't even have a universe. So God deals very methodically and he deals very systematically in the way that he creates things. And so whatever your situation is that you're in right now, there is a reason for it. God is not a haphazard God. God just doesn't do things helter-skelter. There is a reason for you being in the situation that you are in right now. And God has the power to deliver you. God has the power to bring, because God sent Jesus Christ. Jesus said this day before you that this scripture has been fulfilled. Jesus is here to give you beauty for ashes, to give you the oil of joyful mourning because you're not going to be mourning anymore. The Lord is going to restore you. If it be in his will that you have children, you're going to have children. And if it's not in his will that you have children, well, then you just need to praise the Lord and give him thanks because he knows why. He knows why. He's a loving father. He would never, even Jesus said, if you evil men, when your child asks you for bread, you don't give him a stone. How much more do you think your father in heaven will do for you? So God has a purpose and a plan for everything. 
and it continues in verse 7, Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, and everlasting joy shall be unto them. So, I need you to hold on to the promise of God, and I need you to just go before the Lord Jesus Christ and submit to him and ask him, and continue to ask him. I know you're asking. I know you're asking because I would be asking if I were in that same situation. So I'm not saying you're not asking enough. I'm not saying you don't have enough faith. Well, examine your own heart and determine whether or not you have enough faith. I can't do that for you. But also determine if it would, is in the will of God for you to have children. And if it is, continue to persist in prayer. Continue to be like the woman in the parable that Jesus gave. The widow that always went and knocked on the judge's door every evening. And the judge finally gave in to her because she was so relentless. There is no other name but the name of Yeshua, Mashiach. There is no other God in the history of faith that has fought for his people the way Yahweh has fought for his people. And so, husbands, as the head of the household, I encourage you strongly to go before the Lord one-on-one, -on -one, just you and God, and begin to intercede for your wives. Pray with your wife, but also pray alone with God. Wives, don't give up. Continue to pray and continue to trust in the Lord and continue to go before the Lord with everything that you have and pour out your heart into him. Because anyway, he knows our hearts and he knows our needs even before we speak them. Let me just pray. Let's just pray just for a second as the Holy Spirit leads. And I hope that this word is going to bless someone today and I hope above all things, that you will be encouraged to continue to fight the good fight and to continue to have faith in Yahweh. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are watching this video, for the people who need to hear this word, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for putting this word upon our heart and for putting this word out there. I come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have promised in your word that you have been sent to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. You have been sent to comfort those that mourn. And I want to put my sisters into your hands, Lord. All these women who serve you faithfully and lead godly lives and cannot have children, Lord, I I come before you, I join with them, Lord, I stand in the gap with them, I stand in the gap with their husbands and them as well, Lord, just coming and asking you, Lord, to extend your hand and reach your hand and touch these women, touch these women the way you touched Sarah, Lord, touch these women the way you touched Rachel and Rebecca, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, there is no one like you in this world, there is no one like you in this universe, Lord, you are the Alpha and you are the Omega, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider, Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, and say, Lord, touch these women. According to their faith, let it be unto them, O Lord. Open up their wombs, Lord, that they may have children, Lord, that they may have joy and that they may have peace, Lord, and that they will raise these children in the way that they should, in a way that will glorify them, in a, in a way that will glorify you, King Jesus. We stand upon your promises today, Lord, knowing, Lord, that when we ask something, you will give it to us, Lord. If when we ask, Lord, you have said we are two or three are gathered in your name, there I shall be among them, Lord. I stand right now and reach through the virtual world of YouTube, Lord, and I pray, Lord, and join my faith, Lord, with the faith of the husbands and the wives who are trusting you, Lord, for a child. That's all they want is a child. They're not asking for physical possessions. They're not asking for material things, Lord. All they want is to have children because children are a blessing from you, Lord. Let this be a testimony, Lord. Let this test, let this dry period in their lives, Lord, bear fruit, Lord, that this might be a testimony unto your goodness, unto your mercy, unto your greatness, O oh, Heavenly Father, because you are faithful. You are not like man. You do not change your mind, O oh, Heavenly Father. You are the great I am. You are our provider, Lord. I just want to give you thanks because I know that you have had us, Lord. 
I want to give you all the glory. I want to give you all the praise because there is no one like you. And I know that your word will be established, Lord. In the same way that you showed Ezekiel in, the, in Ezekiel chapter 37, Lord, when you showed him the value of dry bones, Lord, and you asked him to speak into those dry bones, Lord. You asked him to speak into those dry bones, Lord, and he spoke, Lord, your word. And your word breathed life into those dry bones, Heavenly Father. And one by one, the bones started shaking and coming together. And one by one, the flesh just began to form onto these bones, O oh Lord. Lord, and you raise up an army, Lord. I am speaking, Lord, right now into the dry bones, Lord, into the desert, Lord, of these people who want children, Lord. I am speaking life into this in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, because there is no one like you, Lord. Let your word go forth, O Heavenly Father, and bear fruit, Lord, because you, Lord, when you say something, your word does not return unto you void, Lord. And no, I believe that, Heavenly Father. We believe that. I believe in you, Lord. I have faith in you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I speak life, Lord. The life and the power of the Holy Spirit, the breath of the Holy Spirit that was there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, Lord. When the Spirit, Lord, the Holy Spirit was moving. And you said, let there be light, and there was light. I call upon the Holy Spirit right now and say, Holy Spirit, reach out, Lord, and touch each and every person that is watching this video that needs this message, O oh Lord. Touch the lives and the wombs of each and every woman, Lord, that will reach this video and that needs to have children, O oh Heavenly Father, Lord. Touch their wombs and breathe life into those wombs, Lord, that they might grow fruit, that they might bear fruit, that they, the seed might grow, Heavenly Father, and they might have children, and those children shall be a testimony unto you and those children O oh heavenly father shall serve you all the days of their lives i thank you lord i thank you heavenly father because you are a god of the impossible where man sees an, a roadblock you see just an opportunity to show your greatness and your goodness and your favor lord and i ask O oh heavenly father as your humble servant if i may find grace and favor in your sight O oh heavenly father that this word and that this prayer shall not fall empty, but it shall return, Lord, with a promise for new life, with a promise for joy. I stand upon your promise, King Jesus. You have said you would never leave us nor forsake us, that you would be with us always. And when you died on the cross, when you were born, that prophecy was fulfilled. The spirit of the Lord was upon you to come and bring joy and comfort to those that need it, to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, I ask that you give double portion of blessings to the people that are watching this, that they shall have more than one child. They shall have children, O Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, O Heavenly Father, because there is no one like you. I love you. We love you. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. And we lay down our lives before you and offer ourselves up to you as living sacrifices. And we ask that you cleanse us, that you purify us, Lord. That we shall be pleasing unto you. Unto you. And that everything that we shall do, everything that we say shall be a, a testimony unto you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord, because it is done, it is finished, and I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a lovely Sunday, and God bless you.